In this episode, a man keeping five big cats, including a Siberian tiger and an African male lion in his backyard of his house, makes a terrible mistake. After his lion attacked an innocent boy and the neighborhood lobbying the city to confiscate his cats, he is eaten alive by his Siberian tiger while feeding it. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying tiger attack on Norman Buwala. Welcome to Final Affliction. Today, we look at the very preventable death of 66-year-old Norman Buwala. And even though this happened in 2012, this case actually started 10 years earlier in 2004. You see, Norman had a liking for exotic cats. The bigger and more vicious, the better. He lived in a quiet Ontario neighborhood where nothing exciting ever happened. Kids still played out on the streets. School buses arrived every morning to pick children up for school, and the older residents walked their dogs in the evening. But in that sleepy neighborhood, Norman kept no less than five big cats on his property. Among them were a massive 650-pound Siberian tiger, a young male African lion, a cougar, and two other wild cats that were never identified. Even though Norman kept their cages well-maintained and his safety protocols mirrored those used in zoos, the neighbors were understandably uncomfortable having the dangerous predators right in the middle of the place where their children played every day. They couldn't do much about it. Norman was the head of the Canadian Exotic Animal Owners Association, and he knew the laws back to front. He had permits for his animals, and he passed every inspection on his cages, and the fencing around his yard was all up to standard. According to the law, Norman was within his rights to keep the dangerous predators right next to the bus stop outside of his house. But just like the neighbors feared, a terrible accident happened when a 10-year-old boy traveled all the way from Toronto to visit Norman with his parents. The boy was doing a school project on Siberian tigers, and he traveled all this way to get up close to the real thing. He was taking pictures of Norman's prized feline possession when the tiger struck. The poor lad had gotten right up close to the cat's enclosure when the animal lashed out and its claws raked the boy's face and neck right through the fence. The boy survived, but only barely. The lacerations on his neck were millimeters away from his main artery, just a hair to the left, and he'd have bled out in seconds. His face was left terribly scarred, and no amount of surgery was ever able to fix his now permanently crooked smile. The attack would lead to two years in the courts. The neighbors rightfully took it to every judge that would hear them. But Norman was within the law to keep the animals, and by some miracle he never even faced any repercussions for the boy's grievous injuries, nor was he required to get rid of the tiger. Furious, the neighborhood was forced to back down for the time being. If Norman's cages were up to standard, and he kept passing inspections, there just wasn't anything they could do about it. Just a year after Norman's last appearance in court, they dragged him back on the stand. He'd taken the teenage lion out of its cage and allowed it to play with his dogs right there in his backyard. A quick-thinking man managed to get a few photos to present to the court as evidence. Norman, for all his heavy cages and stellar inspection record, couldn't weasel out of this one. What he'd done was utterly irresponsible, and the only reason no one got hurt was because the lion was relatively young and probably hadn't been kept in a single small cage for long enough to have driven it mad with frustration yet. This was enough for the courts to force Norman to rehome the lion, cougar, and the other three cats on his property. But somehow, Norman managed to keep the Siberian tiger in his possession yet again. The neighbors were still fighting to change the laws in Ontario to prohibit dangerous animals from being kept on residential properties, hoping to finally be rid of the animal that had proven once before that it was perfectly capable of attacking a human being. But Norman fought them for another two years, all the way up to May 19th, 2012. That morning, Norman started his day as per usual. He fed his dogs. 
and before he took them for a walk, he headed off to visit the magnificent tiger that already sat waiting for his breakfast. The cages that Norman had installed were very much like you'd find in any zoo or park that holds animals this big and dangerous. The tiger had a large living space, stacked with straw to roll around in, and plenty of logs and tires to climb and play on. But off to the side was another smaller cage, connected to the larger one by a collapsible gate. The point of this smaller cage was to lure the animal in with food. It closed behind the tiger while it ate, leaving Norman free to clean its living space and to do maintenance. Now, if this were a zoo, the tiger would have been fed in that side holding, regardless of whether it was a cleaning day or not. No handler is allowed to feed an animal by hand or just freely walk into the cage with a creature, no matter how big or small they are. But just like with his lion, Norman wasn't all too fussed about protocol. He'd convinced himself that the tiger was tame, just like he believed the lion was when he allowed it to run around his yard. So holding a bowl full of raw elk meat, he walked into the cage, latched the door behind him, and placed the bowl in front of the hungry tiger. But then he did what no man should ever do in the presence of a predatory cat. On his way out, he turned his back on the creature. Even with the food in front of it, it just couldn't resist its natural instinct to go for the warm, living prey instead. The attack would have been quick. Norman, with no place to run, already on the older side at 66 years old, just didn't stand a chance. When the animal bit into Norman's neck, it didn't just tear out his throat, it nearly decapitated him. The predator, now with a fresh kill at its disposal, forgot all about the chunks of elk behind it and focused on eating Norman instead. For two hours it devoured him in peace before Norman's cousin, who just happened to come around for an unannounced visit, came upon the grisly scene. By that time, there wasn't much left of Norman to remove from the cage. Everything between his feet and chest were already consumed, and the tiger's blood-stained snout was enough to send Norman's cousin into hysteria. She went into such a state of shock that she required three nights in the psych ward under sedation after the discovery. The only two positive things that could be taken from this horrible event was that Norman remembered to at least latch the gate shut behind him, or the animal would have certainly made its way out into the neighborhood. And secondly, the neighbors were finally vindicated, even if it was thanks to the rather morbid death of the very man that gave them so many sleepless nights. The tiger miraculously again avoided a death penalty. The family were allowed to sell it off to a private collector, whose identity was never disclosed. The neighbors went onto the property themselves to dismantle the cages once the tiger was gone. But to their horror, they discovered that Norman had installed two brand new holdings. Apparently, he was planning on restocking his property with even more ferocious cats before his death. This last fatal report and the fact that Norman was planning on procuring more animals was enough to finally get the change in laws that Ontario needed. That's not to say that private owners can't keep vicious animals on their properties anymore, but they can't be kept in residential areas, and the procedures to obtain licensing to keep them have become so strict that it's almost too much of a hassle to even bother to try getting approved. On this channel, we never celebrate the death of another human being, no matter how irresponsible they were. But at least some good came out of the horrible ordeal. No lions, tigers, bears, or even venomous snakes can pose a threat to the residents of Ontario ever again, and will never bring another person like Norman Buwala to their terrifying final affliction.